And kids are back in school, a place where they should feel safe so they can learn. But what if the people who are supposed to keep those kids safe are actually putting them in danger? I'll explain in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? Last month in Tennessee, a sheriff's deputy pepper sprayed and arrested a high school student. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dang, what did that kid do to get pepper sprayed? Well, the answer is he refused to participate in a game of kickball, which sounds reasonable to me because kickball sucks. Now, I've never watched baseball and thought, I wish this sport had more soccer in it. <laughs> Arresting a kid for not wanting to play kickball is insane. But when I heard that story, I couldn't help but wonder, why was that officer at the school in the first place? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Because that sheriff's deputy was something called an SRO, and that stands for school resource officer. A school resource officer actually sounds pretty great. Like the person you go to when you need construction paper or when Kevin eats all the glue. But <laughs> according to the Department of Justice, SROs are sworn law enforcement officers responsible for safety and crime prevention in schools. In other words, they're actual cops who hang out at schools in case some kid doesn't feel like playing kickball. But at least they can't arrest children, right? Wrong. Because they're active officers, SROs can arrest children, and they do. Basically, SROs are like those old school paper cutters. They're supposed to be helpful, but in reality, they are quite dangerous. <laughs> can you believe we used to put one of these in every third grade classroom? <laughs> that ain't nothing but a rusty little guillotine. <laughs> but at least these SROs are policing all kids equally, right? Wrong again. According to an ACLU study in California, SROs disproportionately arrest Latina boys and students with disabilities. Also, black students are three times more likely to be referred to law enforcement compared to white students. That is one of those statistics you wish you never learned. Like that one about how the average person swallows seven spiders in their lifetime, or the fact that white people don't use washcloths. And, Black kids at schools with SROs have arrest rates that are over seven times higher than in schools without. Even worse, USA Today discovered that police in schools arrested an average of 130 children a year from ages five to nine. Yeah, five to nine. You cannot arrest a five-year-old. A five-year-old shouldn't even go to Monopoly jail. <laughs> go on ahead and collect that $200 and roll again, baby. Now, I don't want to say what people who arrest five-year-olds deserve, but I will say it involves this. Now, <laughs> the thing is, even if the school's SRO doesn't arrest you, that doesn't mean you're off the hook because officers also give tickets for smaller infractions, and those target minorities too. According to ProPublica, in one Illinois school district, black and Latino students together received about 65% of the tickets since 2018 even though they were only 32% of district enrollment. Come on. The only tickets that should go disproportionately to people of color are Lizzo tickets. <laughs> As a people, we have been through a lot, and we deserve to watch her playing that slaveholder's float. <laughs> and the fines aren't small. Left unpaid, fines can go to debt collectors and land kids in the court system before they're old enough to have their first job. It's also worth noting that a lot of these tickets are for relatively small things, like possession of e-cigarettes or truancy. Now, I'm not condoning smoking and skipping school. I'm just saying, if school wasn't a place where they gave out tickets and arrested people, maybe kids would stop vaping and show up. Now, <laughs> as I think we've established, the presence of SROs in schools is bad, but at least they're only punishing kids for things they've actually done, right? Wrong a third time! Didn't you see that coming? Don't you know how this show goes? You're wrong. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even have to do anything wrong to get in trouble with SROs. You heard me, right? Because right now, in at least one Florida county, law enforcement uses a system to predict which kids are going to get in trouble in the future and gets the police involved in advance. According to the police manual, the cops use personal information to find at-risk youth who are destined to a life of crime which is horrifying. No kid is destined to a life of crime. Well, except for this one. <laughs> His toy is a weapon. <laughs> that baby
baby is an aggravated assault waiting to happen. And the criteria the cops use to decide if a student is at risk is ridiculous. According to the manual, getting a D grade or having a parent or sibling go to prison could be enough to put a child in the at-risk category. Well, the writer who wrote this piece would like you to know that they have parents who are both convicted felons and they are doing just fine. Literally, the only thing they are at risk for is getting sucked into a tiny house hunter's marathon. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Zachary. Those houses are cute, but they are not practical. <laughs> now, none of this is to say that kids don't mess up. They do. That's the whole point of being a kid. But that's why we need to teach them, not imprison them, financially bankrupt them, or judge them based on their family's problems. So what do we do? Well, one Los Angeles district cut a third of the school police budget and put that money into something called the Black Student Achievement Plan to support the mental and academic well-being of black students. And uh, yeah, I like it too. But you want to know what happened when they did that? Nothing. The kids felt safer and the school didn't become a crime den. The police have tried to convince us that if we reduce their influence, the world will look like a Mad Max sequel, but it won't. Well, unless the Mad Max sequel is called Mad Max, you stopped over policing us and things got better. <laughs> oh, and remember that SRO at the beginning who arrested a kid who didn't want to play kickball? Well, he left the school, and so far, according to the sheriff's office, he has not been replaced, which is the right thing to do, because having police officers in schools, much like having these, is just too damn dangerous. This has been How Did We Get Here?